Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. We have managed to get four of us online in the three time zones that I think are the furthest apart uh, from each other on the globe um, from our perspective. So uh, I'm Jam. Uh, this is a sort of video live extension of the Acquia podcast where I talk with people every week about Drupal, technology, community, and business. I was chatting with Lee Rowlands way, way far away from me in Australia recently. Lee wrote a blog post called Drupal 8 Won't Kill Your Kittens, and I thought that was the, would be a great topic for the conversation. And Lee invited along Tim Plunkett in San Francisco and Daniel Vena. Christopher Holland asks, is theming going to get easier with Drupal 8? Um, and so potentially yes, because the theming is done with this new template language called Twig, which you can write in a very human, understandable form. Um, and then it gets compiled. So it, as Daniel said, it probably runs faster. Um, and it brings a lot of, so it brings a large community with it because it's what the Symphony community uses. So it's really extensively tested and extremely well documented. Um, yeah, and more than Symphony. More people use it than just Symphony. Oh, OK. Sorry. Yeah. Um, that's where I. I Right, but it's also maintained by Sensio Labs somehow, who are the Symphony people. So, um, and last point, and then we'll just move right, right along. Um, it's a lot more secure because um, you can't put PHP into the theming layer, and Twig absolutely cannot touch your database. Therefore, um, a lot of security issues around poorly or maliciously written themes um, end up disappearing. So, so um, theming for Drupal 8 is looking really, really exciting and interesting. Oh, and um, because Twig is a language written to express visual stuff, and PHP never was. So yeah, um, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be great. Tess Flynn asks, "Where's the best place to look for code examples for module developers? Uh, Pants module, example module, something in core?" Um, she says, "Docs are already stale, and blog posts are moldy." So. Um, I'll, I'll kick that off, and then you guys maybe can help me out. Um, I believe that it is just a tad slightly too early to really be um, upgrading modules yet. I was talking with Rick DeBurr in Prague. He's also in Australia, and he's a really big advocate for keeping the contrib space um, up to date with core, you know, getting people to, helping people to upgrade as soon as possible. Yes, it's it's time to be gathering our strength to upgrade our modules, um, but I think Core needs to get the, get the tiniest bit more stable. And a, a, a shameless pitch here, um, I recorded a podcast with Rick, and I'm going to be talking with Susan Rust and Carl Shire, and they're running a thing called Top Shelf Modules. The idea there is to get um, sort of guarantees around module quality and sustainable, uh, actually, sus you know, sustainability for the for the project by supporting module developers and by by you know talking about exactly this kind of stuff. So my best bet of all is that I should ask this question to those three people again when I speak with them. Do you guys have anything to say about this? Do you know where we could find? Uh, good information about module developer uh, stuff? You just, I mean, pants and example. Examples are in progress. Um, I think the blog posts right now, while they're very helpful for a couple of days, get insanely out of date. Um, and it's like a full-time job to keep those up to date. Um, and it's worse because it's a blog post. It's just not on GitHub or anything. Yeah. And, I mean, just the other day, someone posted a blog post uh, on the, the Friday of DrupalCon during the Code Sprint. And it was already three weeks out of date, and people were trying to use it to upgrade their stuff, and it just wasn't working. Um, uh, I, I think the biggest thing we need now, um, I mean, it's not really time. If, if, if you want to port your module, you're doing it for core, not for contrib, because you're helping us find 
uh, inconsistencies and bugs and stuff. You're going to have to update it a couple more times. Yeah. So if you want to uh, participate like that, that'd be really awesome. Um, but I think one of the things we need to do is come up with, uh, if you want to do something like this, this module is a really great example. You know, so for example, if you want to use uh, plugins that have dynamic configuration, the action module is really great. Mm. Um, if you if you want to learn how to just vanilla plugins get them up and running as quickly as possible, then Tor module is really great. Oh. Um, and, and things like that, you know, different topics point them to different places until the examples module is really, really up to scratch. Okay. Um, do you know if there's a do you know if there's a central? Nope. Uh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, I, I think mean, I just, IRC I just, would be the best resource for that. Right. And the problem okay. is that I, you know, people ask a question and someone answers it, and then that person gains that knowledge, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem. I mean, I'll answer yeah. questions till I die, but I'm not. Every time I do it, I'm doing it over again. Right. So the best answer of all is that core needs to get just a, a little bit further down the road and stable enough for people to do the examples. Uh, you know, the more or less definitive version of the example module, um, and then uh, we can really start upping the tempo in the contrib space. Is that fair to say? Yeah. I mean, I know I'm personally working on finishing the leading hook menu, and you know, until that's completely done, kill it with fire. It's, I mean, it's the main entry point to modules, so that's a big problem. Okay. So still, stuff like that is is settled, then yeah. Okay. Well, so there's a Drupal eight stack exchange tag, uh, Drupal answers tag as well. I mean, yeah. the stuff there is. Curated at least, so that should be kept up to date and it's recorded for. It's it's the same Q and A as IRC, but it's actually recorded. Okay. Yeah. So if someone really wants to port a module to Drupal 8 now, I think I would recommend them to port the module and just figure out whether Drupal 8 has all the features they need. And if there's some missing feature, they should report it, um, but not try to waste an, a long a lot of time uh, on actual porting all the small things. All right, so one minute each. Um, what's the most compelling feature of Drupal 8 for you? Configuration management. Um, it, it, it fixes a, uh, in what Drupal 7 is a completely unsolved problem. It makes it a solved problem, and it's just, it just works. Right, and c configuration management is so awesome. Uh, configuration is taken out of the database and put into files, which means that we can uh, version control our configurations and export and import them, and it all just, and simply with completely known version control uh, and, and other very well understood technologies. Yay, CMI. Um, Lee, most compelling feature of Drupal Yeah, I'm going to come back to the entity and field API improvements, um, you know. That would make them. And the CMI will make a huge difference, and but I can't just repeat what Tim said. So okay, so no, I don't feel like the the fact that it's a unified system now, more or less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, and what's it, a real world? Why is that? Why is that so great? Uh, I mean, we do a lot of custom modules with our for our clients. You know, a lot of working with Drupal is taming it to do exactly what the client requests are, and. Um, Having to work with first class entity objects rather than standard class is a huge win. Okay, so that's a real win for developers too. Yeah. Okay, and Danya? Um, my favorite thing beside uh, configuration management is uh, the multilingual support in Drupal 8 because um, you can install Drupal without downloading anything extra in whatever language you want. You can configure your site with multiple languages without any additional uh, module. You can build your Drupal uh, site in Drupal 8 now, even uh, on Spanish, French, and whatever. This will be a huge thing in Europe. Right, and um, uh, for the first time ever, I think you can run a Drupal site without, without English being activated as a language somewhere. Um, and translation updates. Oh, this is, I think yes. this is huge, too. Translation updates can be implemented through the admin UI, so you don't have yes. to have server access to add and update translations from the Drupal uh, translation server. I think that's really huge, yes. too. Yeah, it's really fascinating. If you install Drupal 8 now, 
and you choose another language, it automatically pulls in the latest translations of the language you have chosen, and then it will display the, ins display the installer in the language you selected. Yes. Thank you so, so very much for, for taking the time to talk with me, and I will see you sometime soon, I hope. Thanks. Good night, guys. Take care. Good night. Good night. Yeah.